All right, we're going to get started with the agenda portion of the meeting. Uh, we have nothing on second reading. We have ordinances on first reading. Number one, in orders to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 10. Vehicles and traffic, Chapter 10 20, Handicapped Parking, Schedule 39. Parking zones for handicapped persons at three parking zones uh, 44 Chester Circle, 10 Lower Place, 68 Rimson Avenue. And we have number two, in orders to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 10 12. Traffic control regulations, schedule 22. Traffic control signals, George Street at Hamilton Street, so Johnson Drive, uh, George Street at, at Albany Street. Then we have resolution, approve, number one, approve agenda amendments. Number two, approve payroll. Number three, authorize refund for redeemed tax sales certificates. Four, approve request for street closing and use of city property requested by Veterans Alliance of Raritan Valley Incorporated for Albany Street, George Street, Livingston Avenue, at Monument Park. From Highland Park to New Brunswick, Park Location, Monument Square Park, for a parade to honor the veterans who served in the United States Armed Forces. Uh, date, Saturday, November 11, 2017, street closure. Mm -hmm. All right, five, approved request for street closing and use of city property by Rutgers Recreation. Um, Rutgers University <coughs> Police Department, uh, New Brunswick Recreation, Location, Bugle Park. Various streets for the Big Chill 5K road race to raise funds for Christmas gifts and underprivileged children. Food banks, soup kitchens, feed the hungry programs in New Brunswick. Street closure. College Avenue closed starting at Huntington Street for the beginning of a race and College Avenue between Bartlett and Senior Street. Rolling street closure. College Avenue to Somerset Street to George Street to Huntington Street to College Avenue to Bugle Park entrance. Around the park loop to Wyckoff Street to Richardson Street to Sicker Street to Stone Street. Date Saturday, December 2nd, 2017. Time 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. park. Time 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. street closure. Police extra duty. Um, that's five, right? Yeah. Six, approve off premise raffle merchandise at Raritan Valley Work Center for six terminal road. New Brunswick for Easter Seals, New Jersey. Date Friday, December 8, 2017. Seven, approve request for annual horse drawn carriage rides. Uh, for free horse drawn carriage rides through downtown New Brunswick. Date. Friday, December 15, 2017. Saturday, December 16, 2017. And Sunday, December 17, 2017. Time, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Police extra duty. 8. Approve amendment of resolution R-091724. Reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of $1,150 for Benedict and Altman. For Police Director Anthony Caputo in the matter of Arthur Anderson et al. versus the City of New Brunswick from $41,255 to $42,405. 9. Approve request for city street closure and use of Monument Square. Requested by New Brunswick City Market. Closure location, Liberty Street, Livingston Avenue from George Street to New Street to Heldridge uh, Driveway. <clears throat> to George Street to Byard Street, George Street to New Street to Byard Street, leaving access to Heldridge Way for holiday tree lighting, snowmobile performers, and chili cook-off. Date of uh, December 1st, 2017. Time 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Park. Time uh, 3 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. street closure. Police extra duty. 10. Authorized by police department under the New Jersey uh, State Approved Co-op 65 MCE uh, SCCPS Educational Services Commission for New Jersey Pricing System from CDW <coughs> Government Incorporated for one Microsoft Surface Pro Computer with accessories not to exceed $1,583.11. 11, authorized purchase by the division parks under this New Jersey State approved co-op, uh, six, number 65 MCE, SCCPS, Educational Services Commission of New Jersey Pricing System, from Power Place Incorporated for two John Deere mowers, not to exceed $35,302.80. Mm -hmm. Twelve, uh, approve authorization for submission of draft municipal access plan to uh, New Jersey Department the NJDEP for review and adoption into the city's master plan for access to tidal waters and shoreline within the municipal boundaries. Thirteen, approve award of contract for printing and binding of various forms for the municipal court with Taylor Incorporated doing business Taylor Communication for items one, two, three, and four, not to exceed twelve thousand one hundred sixty-five dollars with Concept Printing Incorporated doing business as Concept Print. For items 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, not to exceed $10,717.80.
term, 12 month period commencing November 3rd, 2017 and ending November 2nd, 2018. Specification number 62417P, 14, authorized purchase by the police department under state contract A-85943-2, the T-1776 Data Communications Network Services from Verizon Business Network Service Incorporated for T-1 Circuit for Radio Network, term November 1st, 2017 to December 31st, 2018. Not to exceed $5,917. 15, approved request for street clothes and use of city property requested by restaurant guys. Location, Monument Square Park for the annual fireworks celebration. Welcome to year 2018. Fireworks will be shot from the roof of the Heldrick Hotel with DJ Entertainment at the Snowmobile, Snowmobile Street Closure location. Livingston Avenue between New and George Streets. George Street between Liberty and New Streets. Date Sunday, December 31st, 2017, and Monday, January 1st, 2018. Time 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Police extra duty. 16. Approved, authorized to advertise for cellular antenna lease. Specification number 65017P. 17. Approved award of contract with gold. Gold type business machines doing business as GTBM with one e-ticketing plus software license. Term 12 month period of commission, August 1st, 2017, ending July 31st, 2018. Not to exceed $9,944, none pro tone. Uh, 18, authorized the lease of a copy machine for the police department. Rico, Rico uh, USA Incorporated for one Rico model MP255 40S SPG copier system. Copy system. Not to exceed $79.95 for a commence, uh, for month commencing December 1st, 2017 and ending November 30th, 2021. 48 month contract, state contract uh, number 40467-G-2075, copyrights, maintenance, and supply. 19, authorized, uh, authorized to advertise for furnish and deliver membrane modules for the portable, portable water infiltration system. Specification number 65117W20. Approved Chapter 159 Budget Insertion for New Brunswick Tomorrow for Family Friendly Center. Fiscal Year 2018. Amount $25,000. 21 Approved Chapter 159 Budget Insertion. New Brunswick Tomorrow for Community Development Housing Capacity. Uh, building Initiatives. Fiscal Year 2017-2018. Amount is $60,000. 22 Approved Amendment of Resolution. Uh, reason Additional Amount of $12,792 with Garden State Laboratories Incorporated, a laboratory analysis for the water utility, not to exceed $12,792. 23, resolu 22, resolution authorizing budget transfers, 2017 municipal budget. 24, approve amendment of resolution R-041713, change order number 10, with Joe Med Contract Incorporation for 2015 sanitary sewer improvements project Phase 2A, specification number 89515A, amount $19,528.72. Approval of this change order will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the amount of the original contract. 25, approval amendment of resolution R-111724, change order number 11, with Joe Med Contract Incorporation for 2015 sanitary sewer improvements. Project phase number 2A, specification number 89515A, amount of $4,846.50. Approval of this change order will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. Twenty-six. Authorize the mayor to endorse the city health certificate for cancelization of block number 59603, lot number 001. Dash 06 certificate 11 dash 748 one edifice rule 27 authorized refund to Bright Key Property LLC in a total amount of seven thousand four hundred forty eight thousand thirty two cents against the water account one dash 06 dash 001 dash 0600 block number 255 lot number 025 288 Commercial Avenue 28 pulled at the request of the city attorney 29 approve amendment of resolution. R-09-0976-091-760, change order number two with Garden State uh, Highway Products for a 2017 furnish and deliver regulatory sign, specification number 912-17, amount of $180. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of the 20% or more of the original amount, original contract. 30, approve amendment of resolutions R-091-160. So, uh, supplemental services number one for CHA for engineering service design of standby generators at three fire stations. Specification number 791-11 RFP, amount of $5,450. 
31, approved relaxation of city noise ordinance requested by Carlo and Brothers. Reason to perform hydro jetting of a roof drain on the Rite Aid building on Patterson Street. Date Saturday, uh, Saturday, November 4th, 2017. Alternate date Saturday, November 11th, 12th, 11th and 18th, 2017. Time 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. 32, approved relaxation of the noise ordinance and sidewalk lane closure. Requested by Brightview Landscaping Services. Reason to make repairs in the walkway on Albany Street, Johnson & Johnson between George Street and Nielsen Street. Dates and time Saturday, October 28, 2017 uh, till 7 p.m. and Sunday, October 29, 2017 from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. non pro -tone. 33. Uh, Approved relaxation of noise orders requested by HSC Builders and construction managers, reason to perform milling and resurfacing of asphalt area, parking lot adjacent to New Brunswick train station up to the rear of Johnson & Johnson property of 410 George Street, portion is within Washington Street Road. Date, Saturday, October 28, 2017, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. non pro -tunk. 34, approved renewal of liquor license for special... Yes, sir. I'm going to ask that you hold that one. That one's not ready yet. Hold that to the future. 34? Correct. Okay. Thirty-five approved. Oh, excuse me. Authorized collector to transfer credits on several tax and utility accounts. Thirty-six approved amendment of resolution R-091668. Reason: additional amount of nine thousand eighty-four dollars with Rosenbauer, South Dakota LLC, for one fire apparatus ladder truck for the fire department, not to exceed nine thousand and eighty-four dollars. And we have items of discussion by council. And so on and so forth. Is there um, anything else? Mr. Council, yes, sir. with respect to the public discussion on the Environmental Commission report uh, due to a scheduling conflict, we're going to ask that that be carried to December 6th. December 6th. So the noted. availability of the uh, presenter. So, so noted. That uh, will be carried to the That's a resolution for the Veterans Day Parade. Do you have to do anything that it's so we, we have a little. Yeah, I, mean, I'm not, I was talking to Mr. Lachlan about that. I know you all have been with that. I, I was under the impression that when we pushed to Friday, um, our resolution still says Saturday. I'm going to have to double check the, uh, the request. If you want to excuse me, I'll try to find that in my secretary's files. If not, I'm going to have to comment on it tomorrow. I would uh, I would be okay with that. We will uh, make sure the road is ready on the appropriate day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, we, all have, we all have noticed that it's going to be switched to the tent. It was at the request of the mayor of Highland Park because of the religious reason was So I believe that was finalized. They wanted to change it to the Friday. Yeah. I don't know if the clerk has any. But I don't think it's confirmed. The actual application states that it's for Saturday, November 11th. I mean, I'm sorry, Saturday. Yeah, November 11th. That was the original. Yeah. So we didn't, we didn't get any changes from them. Would you be okay with the ordinance saying that we approve the event for either Friday, mm -hmm. November 10th, or Saturday, November 11th, whichever is agreed upon? Absolutely. Can I make that motion, Mr. Can we make it do that during the meeting? Okay. All right. The meeting will come to order. Will the clerk please do us down and call the roll? Council Vice President Anderson? Here. Council Member Egan? Here. Council Member Escobar? Here. Council Member Socorro Ludwig? Here. Council President Fleming? Here. Please be advised that the notice of the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act has been complied with and satisfied, and that the annual notice, which was gave sufficient notice and time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the municipal clerk of the City of New Brunswick, has been fulfilled with the City Clerk and has been placed in the appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of the City Hall, New Brunswick, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News. Please, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Standing, and we're just going to remember those that lost their lives yesterday in the terrorist attack in New York. As we continue to pray for those and remember those who lost their lives in defense of freedom around the world, and will continue to give their lives in defense of freedom.
Thank you. I make a motion for the minute. Motion on the minute. Yes. Council Vice President Anderson. Okay. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Member Sequora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Fleming. Yes. Okay, we have no public hearings, nothing on second reading. So we have ordinances on first reading. Ordinance number one, ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 10-20, Handicap Parking, Schedule 39, Parking Parking Zones for Handicapped Persons. At three parking spaces, 44B Chester Circle, 10 Laurel Place, 68 Grimson Avenue. With the ordinance setting down November 15th at 6.30, same date to be advertised. Second. Council Vice President Anderson? Yes. Council Member Egan? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Member Sequora Ludwig? Yes. Council President Fleming? Yes. And we have two. An ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles in Traffic, Chapter 10 20, Traffic Control Regulations, Schedule 22. Traffic control signals. Uh, one George Street at Hamilton Street dash uh, Johnson Johnson Drive, and two George Street at Albany Street. Move the ordinance setting down November 15th at 6:30 p.m. Same date to be advertised. Second. Council Member Anderson. Yes. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Member Sequora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Fleming. Yes. All right. Now we have resolutions. From one up to thirty-six. We're going to hold thirty-four. And we're holding thirty-four. And Mr. Council President, members of Council, with respect to uh, four oh four, um, subject to your uh, motion, and consistent with I think your, your intentions, I would uh, propose that. Resolution contained in the packet be amended to read that the, uh, the date would be either Friday, November 10th, or Saturday, November 11th, 2017, subject to the appropriate coordination with the Borough of Highland Park. Okay. If that's an appropriate amendment to the resolution, we can get a motion to say. I make a motion to amend that resolution that would ever be all the way on as far as 10th or 11th. Second. Second. Right. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Egan? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Member Sequora Ludwig? Yes. Council President Fleming? Yes. And now with respect to your resolutions on consent agenda, uh, should you be inclined okay. to vote in favor of that resolution as amended, it would be so noted. Thank you. Thank you. Please also note that 28 was polled. Yes. yes. All right, would anybody from the public like to speak on any of the resolutions? Please come forward and remind you, please give your name and address for the record and uh, withhold your comments to five minutes. Good evening, members of the council. My name is Charles Pradeville. I'm the editor of New Brunswick Today, a community newspaper available for free online at newbrunswicktoday.com and also uh, in print. And uh, uh, I want to start by asking about number eight. This is additional legal fees for the police director, and I'll take the uh, take this opportunity to note that I see before me the law director, the business administrator, the planning director, the water director, uh, the fire director, and and the point I'm making is that the police director is not here, and the police director has actually never been here in at any meeting I've attended in this room. And I've been coming here for the past ten years or so. I don't know, eight years. It's. Uh, uh, I don't understand why you're paying the guy's legal bills and, and he can't even uh, do the courtesy of showing his face at one of your meetings. Um, I think that um, it sends the message that he's above the city council, and I don't think that's how it should work. I don't think he should be above the city council. I don't think he should be above the mayor. But he uh, is not here, and you paying his legal bills, no questions asked, doesn't send the right message to uh, taxpayers. And so uh, I'd like to draw your attention to an August 16th article in our publication that pointed out that this lawsuit. This is only a resolution. Please. Yeah, this, no, this, I mean, this no, lawsuit. No, this, no, 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 but this is going to stick into the resolution. Stop my time if he's going to speak. Okay, we we'll stop the time, but we want to stay on the resolutions. And you, you continue to bring up him not being here, and he hasn't been here. 
But if you want to use it, go ahead. Go for it. Please stop the time. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you'll read in that article, if you choose to read it, that this lawsuit and another similar lawsuit brought by a police lieutenant uh, has so far, just on the mayor's bills for his lawyer for uh, representing him on these punitive damages, has exceeded $225,000 in city taxpayer funds. And when you add in Director Caputo's funds and, uh, you know, for his attorney on these punitive damages and the punitive damages for the uh, business administrator, Mr. Laughlin, that article will tell you that it's now over $341,000 just for the punitive damages. And I will point out that the, our article correctly points out that this lawsuit alleges racism and corruption in the police department. It's actually brought by police officer defendants, either current or former uh, uh, plaintiffs, uh, either current or former cops who are suing the city, and the city is now having to pay these expenses. And uh, I asked back in September to find out about the joint insurance fund, the expenses they're incurring, because actually this is just, this 341000 is just a small fraction of the total cost to taxpayers, uh, uh, in, more generally speaking, uh, the towns and governments that are part of the Middlesex County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. And you're lucky enough to have the chairman of the Middlesex County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund here. Can he give any indication of any ballpark figure of how much this case is costing uh, the JIPS which he runs with his apartment. I can. I can give you an exact number. It came in today. You and I have communicated back and forth over the last couple of weeks. The Anderson matter uh, has cost the JIPS $679,515.66 over two law firms. And, and the other case, the Middleton case? Middleton has cost $921,169 over three law firms. Okay, and uh, I trust Mr. Lockman will be, will be able to send me the breakdown of which lawyers are getting what for which. I don't have that, but if you want to ask that of the fund, we will uh, provide the information. I'll follow up, thank you. So uh, what, I, what I take away from the answers to these questions is well over a million dollars has been spent on these two lawsuits. Uh, just the defense of the accused, not counting whatever settlement or verdict may one day come, we are looking at, uh, you know, almost two million dollars. Do you have any comment on those, those uh, uh, you know, uh, serious expenses? And it's still pending. And it's still pending. State law, we have to. Is that right? Now. Uh, yes. I, I would expect you to comment on the spending, uh, at the very least. Do you have any comment on, on this, uh, the bills? The Tigious Society, we have people who sue the city, including people that you may or may not know, and it's one thing to continue to bring the city into lawsuits and then complain about it at the same time. I mean, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, and I noticed that you do usually uh, abstain from uh, votes on the Middleton matter. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the reason for that? That's none of your business. Oh. Whoa! None of my business. Okay, I'll just let that stand there. Next question on uh, number nine. Where is the Christmas tree going to go now that you have that statue there? Where's the Christmas tree? In, the, in one of the grassy areas um, along uh, Livingston Avenue. Thank you. Number 12, could somebody comment, uh, educate me a little bit about what this uh, uh, change to the master plan is? Uh, the municipal public access plan is a document that has been put together by the uh, Environmental Commission with the help of uh, Blaustein School. It uh, makes a number of recommendations for improving um, access uh, to the, uh, the riverfront area, basically, uh, and how to preserve that in, a, um, in the condition that it's in. It's mostly all preserved uh, area down there, so the process of the council will um, hopefully approve this uh, tonight. We'll send it down to DEP for their review. If they approve it, they'll come back and the planning board will consider adopting it into the national plan. Thank you, sir. Uh, number 19, I'd like to ask for an update on the membrane modules at the uh, filtration plant. Uh, are they all up and running? What is being uh, uh, advertised here specifically? Yeah, please, the council. Um, the water treatment, in particular the membrane filtration area, has uh, essentially four tanks. Uh, full of uh, membranes. This will be the fourth tank um, that will complete to change out of all the membranes. So the oldest membranes we have now will be about five years old. Thank you, sir. 
Number 26, can you tell me uh, why the mayor's authorized to endorse a city health certificate for cancellation of this property? What exactly is this property? Good property. Road property. I think this uh, certificate is a result of an unpaid water and sewer bill that was reduced to a lien that was, uh, I think, ultimately paid or resolved by way of litigation. Okay, so this would be the Homeowners Association for the Hampton Club that owns this because it's one. So. Yeah, okay. Homeowners Association bill. So they, they pay for everybody's water or they just pay for common area? Common area, thank you. Uh, the, the very next one, I'd like an explanation of the uh, $7,000 refund for somebody's water bill. Number 27. The overpayment um, for Mr. Watt. Uh, well, I also can tell you that the director of finance uh, suggests that a refund is in order for $3,600 in water charges and $3,800 in sewer charges that there was an overpayment um, on that uh, property. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask about number 32. Did, did they just take the trees that were on the sidewalk and move them to the middle of the, the Albany Street? There was a various things. Uh, you repair some of the issues with the sidewalk on the right hand side as you come up Albany, they replace some of the trees in the center island, and there's going to be selective trees replacement along the uh, JJ uh, property line in, in uh, Albany Street. Okay. And uh, um, I guess the last one, can I get a little information about the standby generator, 730? Uh, what, uh, uh, what the need is, what, you know, why, why, the, why you need all three, and, and what the existing status of any existing generators there is? Uh, I can speak to that on behalf of uh, the fire department since we're working on it. Um, as a function of um, hazard mitigation program for FEMA, the fire department is eligible to receive grants to install three uh, standby generators at each of the firehouses, engine one, engine five, and engine two. So there was some preliminary engineering done. This is just a, a, a change order to increase the, uh, to bring the drawings up to the current codes, and then we're gonna go out and do that. Okay, so three generators will be purchased in total. And this is just the engineering work on them. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else from the public like to speak on the resolutions and resolutions only? Please give your name and address of the record. My name is Lawrence Serrato. Uh, I live at 191 Pleasant Avenue, Frederick, New Jersey. I'm here as part of my public administration class at Rutgers. I want to just ask a question about uh, resolution 11 on the uh, purchasing of the new John Deere mowers. Uh, was that uh, were they chosen uh, because they were, were they like sent out to bid or would that be cheaper if they were or were they already sent out to bid and that is the cheapest price we could get? We're buying through a cooperative which would have already done a bid and they're extending the prices to all members in the cooperative. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else on the resolutions? Move the resolutions. Second. Council Vice President Anderson. Yes. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Member Sephora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Fleming. Yes. All right. We now have a uh, public discussion on the four part, right? That's correct. And we're going to ask that Mr. Laughlin, can you give us an update on the Feral Pet situation? Well, we have um, we have um, read the Ulbridge. <coughs> Ordinance. We've reviewed the Carney ordinance. We have looked at the Point Pleasant ordinance. We have looked at um, the position by PETA. We've looked at the position of a group called uh, Alley Cats Allies. Allies. Thank you. That just came in today. Um, I've met with. Um, representatives of the police department and the animal control unit. Um, you have heard from the public uh, about their um, desire to have a TNR program here. I suspect you are looking for a recommendation in that area. Um, we're not ready to make one to you tonight. Um, we've also looked at the state 
health department website, which to no surprise takes a no position on it. We looked at the East Brunswick ordinance, which does not allow for TNR. Um, but we are trying to um, make a, a good, well thought out recommendation to you. Um, and we are still doing some research in that, in that particular area. What we have also done in the meantime is we've asked the animal control officers to stand down relative to um, picking up a feral cat um, or a stray cat until we can get a better um, recommendation in place for you. Now, the only um, caveat to that is if there's obviously a, a sick animal or an injured animal we, or an animal that we think may adversely affect public health, we're going to do what I think you would expect us to do. Um, but we are not going to ticket for um, feeding feral cats. We're not going to patrol uh, for animals, which we don't do in the first place. We've always responded to uh, the uh, calls of other residents. Um, and we are going to, uh, we're in the process of looking into developing a relationship with um, other shelters that may um, uh, be no-kill shelters um, in the meantime until we can get a better uh, handle on the, on the program and the, the pros and cons of, of such and um, be in a position to make a recommendation to you. I, I would say that um, you know not everyone believes that TNR is, is a good plan. There are a lot of people who do, um, and uh, quite frankly, I'm not um, schooled in that area. But we're going to try with the assistance of our animal control people, the input of the public that's already been made, and our police department to make a sound recommendation to you. When do you expect to have a recommendation for us? I would ask you to probably give us at least another 30 days. Right. If you have recommendations of, of your own and you have a consensus of council that you want to act without our recommendation, I mean, you're obviously free to do that, but um, we're trying to um, provide a well thought, um, well intentioned uh, recommendation to you. <laughs> right. uh, before we move into items for discussion by, um, well, we have items for discussion by council. Um, as I said, Monday, not me Monday, November 1st, today's November 1st, November is Prostate Awareness Month. And I know I'm participating with a few other people with No Shave in November. I know it's the time of year, but I'm going to try to grow out a little bit. And anybody else that wants to join in, you know, you feel free. Uh, we don't shave the whole month of November, so when we start getting a little scruffy, you with me? Thank you, TK. Thank you. And anybody else? Um, we will be participating in that for the whole month of November, and it's just to bring awareness, and if men in particular, African-American men at a younger age should start getting tested early. I know a lot of people that have, that have passed away from it, unfortunately, at an early age. It's something that can be detected. It's just like last month was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we tell people get tested early and get tested often. And for men, you should not be ashamed to get a PSA test first, start getting it as early as possible. And then whatever they have to do, they have to do. You know, a lot of times we don't want to talk about that because it's a little intrusive. I hate to use that word. But it can be, but uh, it's nothing more intrusive than to watch your family, you know, have to watch you pass away from a dreadful disease. So if you're a male, please get tested. Or if you know somebody, if you know a male, please encourage them to get tested. Also, I want to recognize uh, the fire department and the Vulcan pioneers. Uh, can y'all stand up, uh, fire director? Can you stand up, please? And Ms. Shirley Smith, and anybody else that's from the fire department and the first responders? Shirley, I don't see her. Yes, there she is. I know she's on my No, I want to get. <laughs> I mean, the first responders, I want to congratulate you guys. They did a uh, hurricane relief fund for your support. I like to see I said, any of your first responders? I said, any of, any of your first responders, you know? And uh, they did a hurricane relief fund for Puerto Rico. Was yours specifically Puerto Rico? Or was it for the whole region? 
The first one went to Puerto Rico. Okay. And then you still go? You, you, is it ongoing? Ongoing. Oh, it is. So November 30th, the next shipment will go to Texas and then Florida. All right. So you still are collecting at the firehouse? <laughs> All three fire stations. All three fire stations. Can you get hours? Can you give us the hours? Uh, from 9 to 6. 9 to 6. All right. Thank you. Don't sit down yet. Ned, the Vulcan Pioneers. Um, I was at an event two weeks ago, I think, and Vulcan Pioneers won the NAACP Award for Community Service, and they were recognized for their service to the community and by the NAACP, so we just take this time to recognize them. Can we give them a hand, please? All right, thank you. Go and get me after them. <laughs> All right, anybody else? We just had, um, some of you probably didn't know that we had last Saturday the first week annual domestic violence awareness coalition um, march in the city. It was very successful. So thank you for all of those who were in attendance and supported the cause. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, with that being said, we're going to open up for a public discussion. Please give your name and address for the record, and please uh, stand within the five minute period when you hear the uh, warning, like the one, please wrap up within, what is that, 50 seconds or no, I mean 15? No, that's right at. Right at? Okay. Right at. So can you give them a pot sign for 15 seconds? All right. Thank you. Um, Nancy Scalzo, 110 Chester Circle. Um, I do have a letter here going back to the feral cat thing, one for Mr. Laughlin and for uh, each of the council members for you. you can pass that around. Um, We've enlisted a lot of help to try to help us write this ordinance. I can imagine what we got from PETA. It wasn't, it wasn't a long statement. Well, they want all dogs. They don't, they, they, they're not big on companion animals in general. Um, I want to, um, you referenced trying to find another shelter. In 2016, Animal Control picked up 353 cats in New Brunswick and North Brunswick. 145 of them were from New Brunswick. Um, the money spent was astronomical. Uh, $52,000 altogether. Um, that's just for New Brunswick. Um, in 2017, Animal Control picked up already 266 cats from North Brunswick and New Brunswick. 195 of them were from uh, New Brunswick. So you've spent uh, about $13,650 on bringing cats to um, Bloomix, who is on course for having an 80% kill rate for cats. She's right at the top. There's only one other, play, one other uh, private uh, animal, con animal <coughs> control uh, organization above her. So you've already spent $66,650. And in the two years, you spent uh, almost $120,000 worth of taxpayer money. I'm going to say that probably you're having trouble getting any other shelter to contract. is because of the amount of tax. There's not any municipal shelter around here that you're going to be able to contract with. If your animal control guys are going to bring in over 500 cats over a course of two years, this is a reason why we want to implement TNR. The reason for doing TNR, one of the big reasons, is to keep the cats out of the shelters. So I'm seriously asking you to consider this. We are ready to sit down with the council. Like I said, we've enlisted a lot of good people to help us sit down with you from other places that have these ordinances so that we can work something out that's going to be good for the city. So I'm just asking you to seriously consider this. I don't know what else you have to go through. We are ready to sit down and meet with you when, when you are. So. We, we've uh, asked that, um, going back to the first meeting that I think uh, you might have been at, Nancy, right. um, where we said, um, gave out Russ's phone number and right. uh, I don't think anyone has made contact with him yet. Well, we wanted to get our ducks in order too okay. first, so I think our ducks are in order. I think... Uh, our cats are in order. <laughs> I'm very pleased that you've called off animal control on us because 
You also have a notice that they're handing people that is ancient, and it also contradicts itself at the bottom of the of the notice. So, okay. all right, There's, so um, that has to be stopped. Just bear in mind that the animal control officers are enforcing the ordinance as it currently exists. I understand that, but and, your, your animal control officers uh, also attended the Sustainable New Jersey Conference and they learned all about TNR. So that notice that we're giving out, Mr. Um, Barber has told me that he recognizes it to be at least 10 years old. So you're giving people something that's, that's, that's actually scaring them. So we're I'm happy that now they're not going to be going after these people. Which is very good. So. We're, um, we're going to, as I said before, try to make a, a good, sound recommendation to the council. Um, Oldbridge, as you know, uh, has, uh, does not allow for colonies to exist within a thousand feet of a public school. If we were to adopt something like that here, that would be akin to our drug-free school zone, um, which covers an awful lot of the city. It does allow for um, room maybe in um, the Rutgers Village area or the Jersey Avenue area or um, maybe even uh, Chester Circle area but oh, you know, uh, why Chester Circle? Why? By the way an animal control officer was there I don't, I don't know last week or the week before and he was questioning people that have nothing to do with pets. <coughs> even though he was there all he was doing was walking around, he's pointing out cats. So, oh, that one's not neutered, oh, that one's pregnant. Well, if I was allowed to do TNR in there, like I used to be, then we wouldn't have pregnant cats and unneutered cats running around Chester Circle. Okay, so what's wrong with me mentioning Chester Circle as, well, I, a, just as an area, as that, an might area. Be, that might be suitable for a colony? Okay, I have a colony. I, I was forced to, re, to relocate. We got pushback from the management company out there that they were not in favor of the colony. Well, you can ask this one right here. They helped us raise money about five years ago. Had no problem with us setting up a table at uh, National Night Out. So we collected money that night. We did a TNR program in there. The reason why it stopped was because and a neighbor that was having a problem with the cats it was a personal vendetta against me. It had nothing to do with the cats, but she knew to get back at me, she had to go after the cats. So she made such a problem that I was forced to relocate seven cats at a cost of $2,000 to me. And <coughs> what about all the other cats that are running around in Rampart Gardens? So. I'm just thrilled okay. happy that you're here. We're, 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 uh, <laughs> so, well, we're ready to meet with you. We're myself or we'll call Ross and set something up then. Yeah. To the council. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, I'm just Carol Abusel and Paulus Boulevard. I just want to follow up with what Nancy was saying. And when we were doing our TNR program at Raritan Gardens, it was amazing how much we cut down on the cat population. We, we took in the kittens, we socialized the kittens, adopted them out, got the mothers fixed, got the fathers fixed. It, it was amazing, it was amazing. But then when it stopped, we ran out of funding. Um, it was coming out of our own pockets. We simply couldn't afford to keep up with it. And now it's, it has gone back to being overpopulated. Please, we're really begging you to consider TNR instead of killing all of these cats. It's less expensive. It's more expensive to kill them than to TNR them. And also, your animal control officer was taking colonies of ear-tipped cats. And they were ear-tipped. And that, I don't know if you know what that means, but that, that's the symbol that they have been fixed, that they have been neutered, spayed or neutered. They will tip the cat's ear. And he was taking colonies of ear-tipped cats. And that's, that's wrong. That's not right. They pose no threat at all to anyone. That means somebody has been taking care of them. They're, they're more like just an outside cat than a, a feral cat. 
So I'm glad, but we're very grateful that you have asked him to calm down. Very grateful. So please, thank you so much for considering. We're very grateful for that. Thank you. Anybody come forward? You can come to my Good evening. My name is Dr. Lisa Romanenko, graduate of Rutgers 1989. Uh, I'm a volunteer for one of the organizations here, and I just wanted to talk about other ancillary uh, factors involved in the feral cat situation. And I wanted to submit this also uh, last minute because there's an ideal best practice case study for New York City I wanted to bring to the board's attention. Uh, it's called the Mayor's Alliance for New York City Animals that started the New York City Feral Cat Initiative, and the benefits far out exceed the things that have already been submitted in the testimony, uh, including uh, humanely reducing or repositioning populations of cats to reduce nuisance calls that will reduce the expenditures on uh, this, this company that's a franchise, apparently, that you contract with uh, <clears throat> called Animal Control Solutions Incorporated. That's a federal program. I mean, they make a lot of money. Per carcass, is that? All right, then I'm mistaken. I'm going on limited information. In any event, uh, not only do they uh, rent equipment for uh, helping the capture and reduce these nuisance calls for cats, but strategic feeding stations minimize the nuisance complaints and reposition cats to more uh, amenable areas. Uh, the kittens that can be removed for adoption uh, are providing a, um, a source of revenue for other uh, nonprofits and uh, administration of medicines and vaccine for rabies and other diseases exponentially protects cats, uh, people, and other wildlife in <coughs> proximity that uh, are also being captured. So I just wanted to uh, submit this and some links of interest in the board. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rivers, Lucan Lodge, 135 Jones Avenue, New Brunswick. I've got some questions. Is there a rabies problem in the cat population in New Brunswick? Is there a rabies problem? I'm, I'm, I can't speak to that, but, but cats do carry rabies um, more so than many other animals, so I can't, I can't answer that. Right. I don't know the answer. When I moved into New Brunswick in 1980, there was a dead rat in my backyard. Is there a rat population in New Brunswick? Not that I'm aware of. If you, disturb, if you disturb the ecology between the rats and the cats without fixing the no-lid garbage problem, what do you think will be the conclusion? I mean, I do not know how many people have gone to garbage can Eve and looked at the garbage cans without lids. The ecology of the cat in the I'm not a, I'm not a biologist. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, if you want us to go out and enforce a, a no-lid situation on every piece of garbage that's put out, I think you I, want I don't, to do I don't that know if it's to the cats. Cap if we're capable of doing that, but um, if you want us to consider that as an option. I have a dead mouse on my back porch this morning. Uh, excuse me, should we, should we please keep the comments? I rest my case. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else in the public? And Ledesma, 49 Comstock Street. There has been a rodent problem. And I think the cats in our neighborhood help keep it under control. Because as Ron said, many of the garbage cans do not have lids. And that's just a magnet for rodents. And the cats 
keep them under control. Also, I'm so glad that Nancy talked about TNR, because forcing a human being to ignore an animal in need is cruel to both. The feral cats in our neighborhood are all neutered and spayed. They have a history with the veterinarian. They don't make any trouble. Some have been around for 10 and 12 years. And I ask you, if you do enforce anything, to do so on an individual basis. Thank you. Thank you. Street, my neighbor. <laughs> okay, I would like to uh, get back to the stuff that due to where I was here on the 4th of uh, October at the meeting, I didn't make it to the meeting the 18th. I had brought up a point about the traffic for the school zone. I had spoke about the speed limit and traffic going for Livingston Avenue, for example, due to where I had mentioned wow, a car or vehicle had to be speeding very fast in school zone area to take out the, I, I did say stop starting, excuse me, it was street sign, and to take out the whole entire fire hydrant. I will say thank you to the water department. They did, after the meeting, the next day, they did come and fix the fire hydrant, but I will say, wow, someone's not doing their job, because at the meeting where I told you that was off, that was run over, the accident was two weeks. No one from the water department, no one from the fire department, no one to the police department. Well, they knew about the fire hydrant being taken out by, by a very bad accident. But I will, like I said, thank you. They did refix it the next day after the, after the meeting. But like I said, somebody's not doing their job if no one knew what, what went on. But eventually, it was something to do with speed. And I'm asking where I was mentioning about Livingston Avenue with the speed. For example, for middle school, has anyone since the meeting, anyone from the council or the city put a paper into the, uh, the county asking for the speed limit to be, for the lights, the flashers to be put in front of middle school to slow the speed uh, down to 15 miles per hour? You have it in front of every other school in New Brunswick. Why don't you have it in front of middle school where the speed limit is 35 miles per hour? I showed you the pictures of wow, how close call where a child was getting hit because like I said, the speed. Has anyone put it through to request, for it to be requested? Yeah, uh, yes, I, guess I could speak to that uh, for the council. Yes, the uh, first, for a matter of record, that portion of Living Avenue is jurisdiction of an NJDOT. The city of New Brunswick, as well as, as the township of North Brunswick, including a form that the state wants filled out by the Board of Education, has all been submitted to the state as of over two weeks. In fact, at last meeting, the council uh, passed a resolution in support of us requesting the state to do their inquiry. There's a process. We, we made the formal re written request to the state. They'll do their investigation and they get back to us. But it is the state right away, and the formal request has been submitted over two weeks ago to the state. I thank you very much, and like I said, I hope to see it because, like I said, it's not like I'm only talking about many during dismissal school time. Like I said, we have it in front of every school, and like I said, wow, it's very scary if some of you would take the time to stand there on the corner when the kids are let, let out of school. 35 miles per hour, I meant very dangerous, so thank you for responding quickly, and I hope, hope to see the lights there or whatever soon. Thank you. Also, getting, getting back to... Uh, I, like I said, I did miss the last meeting. Any word on when Lee Avenue and Comstock, Lee and uh, Delavan, Handy and Remsen, and Remsen and Ward will be done with the flat, uh, with the lights, the crosswalk lights? Yes, I can also speak to that. Uh, we have uh, received our DW change order from the contractor. We are having a meeting in, uh, on the 13th of November to kick off the project, and we expect it to be done before the end of December, prior to that. Wow, uh, before the end of the summer, it's been two no, years. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. I thought you said the summer. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Well, okay, that will be good. Good news. And then also, has the paperwork been put through before the, the snow gets here for Lee Avenue for the roads to be repaved? Due to where that's been prolonging the the, the speed bumps. Not, not necessarily function of the paperwork. We have put on notice the project that we want Lee paved. They have a series of plates also we're concerned about with upcoming 
uh, snow removal potential uh, uh, process in December. So we're attempting to put all the pressure we can on this uh, at this point. Uh, unfortunately, it's a project that's a utility, and we have the least amount of control of utilities. But we're putting whatever pr uh, pressure we can on our side. <laughs> Well, no, I, I, actually, I thank you. Uh, I have to say, I did get good news, and like I said, I hope hopefully we'll maybe for school we'll see it soon, though. But thank you, that'll be all for tonight. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Anybody else from the public? Hi, uh, my name is Roberta Berlin. I live in Rutgers Village. I'm curious, um, does anybody here know if there is a noise ordinance for parties and loud music in the area? Yes. There is? Okay. So my experience is that I have a new neighbor who had a very, very, very large party. Where are they at? What? You can tell me. Where are they? Very large party. I mean, within the general area. I didn't hear what you said. Where are they, they located? Within the In Rutgers Village. I mean, okay. So they had a very large party with many, many cars and lots of loud music such that we were trying to watch the baseball game, which was very loud, and we couldn't hear it at all. We kept having to turn up the TV. So I called the police department, and I said, hello, is there a noise ordinance when music should be quiet in the area? I can't hear the TV. And the police officer, male person, said, I have no idea, but I'll send somebody out soon. So the music kept on, the music kept on. I called again, this time I got a female officer. And I told her that I didn't think anyone came, or they came and left, and the music was still on. So eventually, um, and she also didn't know if there was an ordinance. So eventually, um, it got a little bit quieter. And from my house, I can't really see their house, and I'm not going to keep patrolling. So I stood up on my couch and looked out my side window to see what was going on in their yard. And I saw a big fire. And I thought I had smelled smoke. But I thought it was like maybe crazy. So I saw all this smoke. I couldn't imagine what the smoke was. So I took my dog out into the yard and I looked through the trees. And they had some kind of something with a huge fire, lots of smoke coming out. So I was very disturbed by all of this. So that was on the weekend. So on Monday, I came here to this building, went to the city clerk's office, and I said, Is there a noise ordinance around here that somebody can help me about? And the person printed out something, and there's nothing in this new ordinance whatsoever. The only thing I saw relevant maybe was about a lawnmower at 8 o'clock in the morning. And the person said to me, you can call the city attorney, and they'll help you. So I'd just would like to know, is there something that could make me feel better, that there is somebody that cares about our no, company? We're a neighbor, but And I know that we call, I know that a couple of our neighbors, we had problems with a couple people, like a young new people, people had moved in. Well, talk, that's why I asked you. As I didn't you want heard to it where away. you are? Huh? You heard it also where you are? No, no, no. This is, I don't know where you're at. Oh. That's what I'm saying. That's why I asked you. But you don't, you don't have to give it out in public. You know, I don't care. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, however you want to give it. If you want to give it to this room, yes. It doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't I, live, matter. I live on the South Pennington at the beginning of North Pennington and yes. South Pennington. Yes. Same place? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right, yes. We'll he was having a party. No, no, no. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. And we have, I haven't learned, you know. So you all said you thought there was a noise ordinance, but this is the first thing there is. There is a noise ordinance. The noise ordinance does provide for um, a subjective type of uh, level. So can you tell me, because this is chapter 8.28, I tried to look it up and I couldn't find it either. But the person in the clerk's office printed this out for me. Okay, well, there's, there's two sections of the ordinance which provide for the noise control. Um, and that might be one of them. I can't give you chapter and verse off the top of my head. Well, this has this, all these chapters and there's nothing whatsoever about music or people congregating. And we tighten them. Sure. Well, I don't know who else to ask. I can get your copy of yours. Tonight? Uh, and so what time? If you want to wait around after the meeting, I'll make sure. a copy. Sure. And what time is music supposed to die down? There is uh, 24 hours a day. There is no, there's a myth that it's 10 o'clock. Yeah. It's 24 it's a hours myth? a day. It's a myth. No, no, that's 10 o'clock. Oh, it's all 24 hours. And there is a noise a day. People I, think it's after 10 o'clock or whatever. That's not true. 
It's 24 hours a day. If you have a problem with the noise, you can call the police. Oh. I have. Oh, so so there's no set time. Right? Correct. So it can it can be 10 in the morning. Yep. If it's really loud, you yes. just call yep. and the police come. But I'd like to cite that to somebody. So can you give it to me? Yeah. And the fire too? Well, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know what type of fire you're talking about. Is the fire pit? I don't know what it was. I just saw a, a big orange flame and a lot of smoke over well, the roof. I, I, I'm not going to the fire sections. I'd love to talk to the fire so good. official. Um, Does any of the fire people see. know? Yeah, Mr. Quadriano. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. um, yeah. Any type of pan that you're burning wood or charcoal in, you have to have a sparker restaurant on it. Most of the chimneys, you need one with a chimney and a spark or restaurant it. We don't usually allow them without it. Any kind of wood it has to be seasoned wood to be burned in there. So do you want to go pay them a visit and let them know that they did uh, I think the next time you see it, you should Well, I hope there's no next time. Okay, well. A house well, we'll burned down right behind me. So I, I hope that doesn't happen. not caused by that, but. Well, anyway. would you go pay them a visit? We will send something out. You give me an address, okay? Yep, thanks. But in the meantime, if you see another one, you call the fire department, they'll put it out. Because it has to have a restaurant in it. Yeah, has to be a certain distance. No, I didn't examine what they had. I just was scared. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> and had a lot of smoke in my house. Give me the address and we'll take care of Good evening once again, members of the council. Charles Craddock of the Brunswick Brunswick today. Um, Councilwoman Escobar is kind enough to promise to come to the uh, upcoming housing authority meeting at the most recent council meeting. But unfortunately, we both learned at the last minute it was uh, uh, abruptly canceled due to a lack of quorum. Uh, one of the items on their agenda was they were going to pick their 2018 meeting schedule. And now we kind of have a difficult situation because the next meeting of theirs is set for November 15th, the same day as yours. So Councilwoman Escobar won't be able to make it to the Housing Authority unless she wants to miss this job. And uh, I, I wouldn't advise that. I would ask though, could you please, could the, the liaison to the Housing Authority please uh, make a request that when the Housing Authority does approve their 2018 meeting schedule, that they set no meetings for the same date uh, as the council so that, so that we don't put yourself and myself and other reporters in the same situation having to choose between them. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, I was able to get my hands on the Housing Authority's action plan, and I have some questions about that. Um, among the uh, uh, items here is that there's supposed to be a, an operations committee for the board, and they're supposed to hold quarterly meetings at a minimum, monthly as needed. Can anybody tell me if the Housing Authority has uh, been living up to that this year, or have they had no meetings since January? Yes, as I told you the last time that you were here, I think that those are, those are questions that you should direct to the uh, commissioners. So if you don't get the answer, they, and you know that they have, uh, to the best of my knowledge, they have met. I don't know how often, but they have met. Uh, for those are questions that you have to uh, coordinate to the commissioners. And if you don't get the answer that, that you're looking for, uh, because we have no knowledge, other than me, if I'm there, that I receive the information, the rest of the council doesn't get anything from the housing authority. So it's unfair, like I said the last time, for them to uh, do any type of, of formulating an opinion on something that they don't have no knowledge of. The same with me, it will be the case. But go to the housing authority meeting, do, you know, do diligence, which you always do, and then from there, then you come back to us, uh, uh, if you want to just discuss it here, come back and whatever I'm able to answer, I will try to. But I don't think this is the right place for you to answer those questions, to be honest. And we had a conversation that let's go there first and then, then to the second place. Just to be clear, I did since then I met with the chairman and I asked him who's on who's on the operations committee and he couldn't say. So that tells me he that just, he just got in as a new chair, so give him the chance also. He just was appointed, right? <coughs> He's been on the board for many years, and he's been a chairman of the board previously. But yes, he is now back in that role. Uh, I'll move on. That one of the things the city might be able to actually help me with here is uh, uh, the Public Housing Authority is supposed to work with the city on a cooperation agreement and the pilot agreement. Uh, that was supposed to happen before April, but I spoke to Mr. Lachlan via email today, and he told me there's, to his knowledge, there's been no uh, negotiation. Can can the council tell me, is any council members or anybody else in the administration of Mayor Cahill negotiating with the Housing Authority regarding those two important agreements? I 
can only, uh, I'll answer for myself and the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer, who I asked uh, this morning, or this afternoon rather, after I got Mr. Cradwell's email. Um, he has no uh, knowledge of any negotiation whatsoever either. I believe the pilot that you're speaking of uh, is about, has a value of about $35,000. It's an item in our uh, municipal budget. It's a, obviously it's on the revenue side. I've always believed the, uh, uh, the contribution is a formula-driven thing that HUD uh, determines, but um, as I said to Mr. Cradwell, I'm not aware of any such negotiation um, as of having taken place so far. Maybe it still will, I don't know. Thank you, thank you for the thorough answers. And I do, that uh, this is exactly why I wanted to see this corrective action plan, because I wanted to know what's in it so I could hold the city and the housing authority accountable for following through on it so that the housing authority doesn't become a thing of the past. They have a noble mission and uh, HUD has made it very clear what targets they, they've set, uh, agreed to via a recovery agreement. And I want to make sure that, that they're actually going to do the things they promised HUD because in my experience with the housing authority, they've made many broken promises to me. Uh, um, so uh, I, I would, you know, ask you to review this, this document if you haven't already. It's, uh, I released it. It's not on the housing authority website. But uh, uh, please look into it and hold them accountable like I'm trying to. Um, so you had that document you said that? I did. I finally got it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so does the council have any comment on the police department's investigation into the housing authority? Uh, Mr. Council President ran into you on the street the other day and asked you uh, for a comment on that. You didn't run into me on the street the other day. You followed me for three blocks the other day <laughs> under the premise of going to a ribbon cutting, which I haven't seen a story about the ribbon cutting the other day. And I ran into another ribbon cutting. I never saw a story on that. So you ran into me under false premises and you wanted me to give a comment. And I told you at that point, no comment, which I believe that you were trying to solicit some type of reaction out of me at that point. Then, at that point, then you asked me about my job that I've had for 21 years, which you stepped out of line because nobody has ever had the audacity to question my in, in respect to the commitment to the children that I've made for the last 21 years. So let's be clear about that. We didn't run into each other on the street. You followed me for three blocks. Yeah, folks can watch the video of it if they want. I, I understand you would prefer I do a story about a uh, restaurant opening on George Street. Uh, but uh, I'm actually following the real story here that the Housing Authority has been audited by HUD's Office of Inspector Which General and they the questioned $1.4 million dollars in expenses and, I, and the council has not commented on it yet. You, you told okay. me to come to the next meeting and ask you then, so I'm asking you now, I does the council... I didn't have a comment then, but you did come to a ribbon cutting under the premise of a new business opening up in the city. I was invited. Okay, so... I'm not allowed I'll, to come to the ribbon cutting. I took nice pictures of you. I'll send them to you. I'll wait for that. But uh, at the end of the day, I think that instead of focusing on ribbon cuttings, maybe you could focus just a little bit on the dysfunctional housing authority that HUD identified as the third worst housing authority in the United States of America. That's not something New Brunswick should be proud of. And I understand you prefer to focus on positive things, but if we never focus on the problems, they're just going to get worse, like a cancer, like a disease. And that's why I'm trying to shine a light on these things. And I'm trying to, to uh, uh, so far, unsuccessfully get you to uh, focus on that, but... Um, you know, I'm trying to get you to focus on things that's positive that going around the city because, contrary to popular opinion, I believe that this is a great place to live and a lot of people still choose to live here and everything that goes on in the city is not negative. And I've asked you before, I said, okay, did you do a story? Did you do a story on what happened with the fire department? Did you do a story on any of the drives that anything anybody has done? We have businesses open up in the city. I challenged you before to cover those stories, but still, I haven't seen those stories yet. Okay, well, I'm not sure if you understand how the news works, but we pick the stories we work on, not the, not the elected officials. It's the imbalance between a private citizen and a reporter. So, like, I, if I, I know, if I, I'm sorry, excuse me? If I, if I ask you a question, or if I come back and get a comment from you, you'll say, okay, I'm attacking a member of the public. But you bounce in between a reporter and a member of the public, which I'm not sure which one you are sometimes. And as a reporter, sometimes I'm not sure to answer a reporter's question. <coughs> Plain and simple. So, I, I understand you got your opinions. You might, you know, you could start your own newspaper if you want to write about yeah, the, the ribbon cuttings that you, that you go to and you, and you apparently, you know, 
take the day off of work to, to go to. Which is none of your business. That's none but of it is because you're a public no work. Has it ever been a part of your business? Okay. When in any day, you don't know why you don't know if I took off or why I was off. That's the whole thing. You make an assumption, and you don't pay a single tax in Hamilton Township. So you don't have you you have no right to ask me on why I was there or why I'm a private citizen on the street or how I how I manage my job, which I've been doing successfully for 21 years without you overseeing that. I believe I do have the right to okay. ask that question. Okay, okay. Right. Follow right. up. Right. Right. We'll see how far. Can I ask you one more question? Can you tell me what your big accomplishments are this year? I'm not even going to do that. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what I think they are. Okay. I think it was giving yourself a raise. Right. I think it was passing tax abatements for buildings that will hurt the school system and uh, <coughs> dodging the big issue that the housing authority is one of the worst in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Seeing none, motion to adjourn. Second. Council Vice President Anderson? Yes. Council Member Egan? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Member Sephora Ludwig? Yes. Council President Fleming? Yes.